Today, we are going to talk about how to hear and memorize chord changes. So after you learn how to improvise, the next really big hurdle is figuring out how chords go together and how to hear where they're going. Or even if you're listening, listening to a song on the radio, hearing what's going on in the chord structure of those songs. It's actually a lot easier than you would think, especially if you start at the beginning and break it down step by step. So that is exactly what we're going to do today. Before we dive into the video, if you are a regular viewer of my YouTube channel, you can see that I am in a different place. I am currently in Phuket, Thailand, and this is actually my hotel room. So when you're in a hotel room, uh, you can't really practice or play the saxophone very loudly. So in this tutorial, I'll be playing, but a lot softer than usual. There is a PDF download for this tutorial, so make sure you click the link in the video description below so that you can follow along. All right, let's dive in. The first thing that you need to understand is that chords are not random. They are always working together. Think about chords as a sentence structure. So in your sentence, you have a subject and a verb and some adjectives that describe what's going on. All of those things are working together. The same thing happens with your chords. So once you figure out what your main chord is, we call that the tonic, and the chords that are working around it, it makes it a lot easier to memorize chord progressions and hear really common chord progressions. So let's start at the very beginning with the diatonic major scale. The major scale is super important because that is where your chords come from. So when I say the diatonic major scale, the diatonic part of diatonic major scale just means all of the notes in that scale. So if we're talking about the C major scale, that would be all of your notes in the C scale. So C to C with all naturals, so it'd be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now you'll notice that I have numbers above each one of the scale degrees. This is super important because we want to think about these notes as scale degrees or numbers, not as note names. And the reason for that is because when we're talking about chords, there are really common chord movements. And if you think about, if you think about them as numbers, as opposed to note names, it's going to be really easy to recognize them even when they're in different keys. If you're thinking about your scale or your chords as note names, it's way harder to recognize the patterns. Now, let's turn this diatonic major scale into diatonic chords. All that means is we're gonna build a chord, in this case a triad, which is the first, third, and fifth, off of each scale degree. So for the tonic, the root, which is the C, we would skip every other note, and that would be C, E, G. So a triad is your first, third, and fifth. So your next diatonic note would be D, and we are gonna build a D triad in the key of C because we're doing this as diatonic triads or diatonic chords. So if you skip every other note starting on D, your notes would be D, F, and A. Now if you did this based on the D major scale, you would have a D, F sharp, and an A, but because we're doing this in the key of C and we're thinking about diatonic chords, the chord based on the second degree is minor. In other words, your third is lowered from that F sharp to the F natural. Now, just to be super clear, if you would see a D major chord symbol, of course that means D F sharp A, we are talking about diatonic chords right now because we're gonna be talking about how these chords go together in just a couple minutes. So we are building diatonic chords, meaning chords that are all in the same key. And of course you could build a chord on the third and that would be E, G, and B. And you could follow this process for the rest of the notes in the C major scale. When you build diatonic chords, you will have different qualities of chords. All that means is some will be major, some will be minor, and we'll have one that is diminished. Now this is super important because this pattern will stay the same no matter what key you're in. So when we're talking about the quality of diatonic chords, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord are always major in all of the keys, and the two chord, the three chord, and the six chord are all minor in all of the keys, and your seven chord is diminished. So that is something that is really important because it makes life a whole lot easier. You don't have to think about each individual chord in each individual key. You know that the two chord in any key is gonna be minor, the four chord in any key is going to be major. The one chord in any key is going to be major. It just makes it really easy to organize it so you don't have to think about each chord in each key 
for each diatonic step of the scale. Now that we have covered some basic theory, let's talk about the first chord progression, and this chord progression is super common. So the way you're gonna start hearing chord progressions is by playing common chord progressions and getting them in your ears by playing them a lot. And this first prog progression that we're gonna play is the one chord going to the four chord. So we're gonna play the one chord for two measures and then the four chord for two measures. And we're gonna do this in a couple different keys, but we're gonna start off in the key of C. So I'm gonna do this in a couple different steps because there will be different levels of players who are looking at this video. So we're gonna start off really simple and I'm just gonna play the root with a cool rhythm for two measures on the one chord. So in the case of C, that would be a C. Then when I go to the four chord, I'm gonna to switch to the four, which is an F. So I'm just gonna come up with a really cool rhythm, but when I switch from the one to the four, you are definitely gonna hear it. Take a listen. So you can totally hear me switch between the C and the F. So I'm just going between the one chord and the four chord. Now I went up to that F, I could also go down to the F. It doesn't matter which octave I play it in. Whether I go up or down, I'm still playing the four chord there. The next step after just playing the root would be going back and forth and playing a cool rhythm on the first and third of each chord. So for the one chord, which in this case is C, I'll play C and E. And for the four chord, which is F, I'll play F and A. Now the whole idea behind this is getting these sounds in your ears. So I'm just gonna keep repeating it and going back and forth between the two chords. The more I play that, the more natural it feels and the more I'm getting it in my ears. The last step is to play the notes in the chords, but to do it in an improvised way. So for the one chord, you're gonna improvise using a C, E, and a G. And for the four chord, you are gonna improvise using an F, A, and a C. So this is a really important step because you're gonna end up catching a groove and you're really gonna hear the, the chord changes, the chord progression, as you continue to improvise over these two chords. So the more you do this, the more you're gonna recognize a one chord going to a four chord when you're playing a song or you hear a song or just when you're improvising, you're gonna know what that sound sounds like when you practice improvising over a one chord going to a four chord. So this is what that sounds like. I'm gonna improvise going from a one chord to a four chord and then I'm gonna keep repeating it. That is a great exercise to build your ear and get used to hearing chord progressions. Now that you understand the process, here is the twist and the thing that is super important about getting the sound of these chord changes in your ear. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we are gonna change the key. We're gonna change the key. That is why we are thinking about the scale and scale degrees and the chords and numbers as opposed to note names. So now we are gonna do it based off of the G major scale. Of course, your G major scale is G to G with an F sharp. So we will be using those notes. So the one chord in the key of G, of course, is G. So that would be G, B, and D. And your four chord in the key of G is C. So that is C, E, G. You probably just noticed that we have the exact same chord, which is a C chord, and now it is acting as the four chord instead of the one chord. So that is the exact reason why you wanna think in numbers as opposed to letters, because those letters can jump all over the place depending on what key you're in, 
but a one chord going to a four chord is the same in every key. It's gonna sound the same. Whereas a C chord could be acting as a four chord or maybe a five chord or a one chord. It could be acting as all different kinds of chords. So you wanna think about your chords as numbers and scale degrees. That is gonna help you memorize and hear chord changes. So this is the one chord going to the four chord, just playing roots in the key of G. So I'm gonna play G and C. In that case, the C chord sounded like a four chord. It didn't sound like it was resolving to the tonic. It wasn't the root, it wasn't the main chord. You could hear that it wanted to go back to the one chord. And this is what the one chord going to the four chord sounds like when I improvise over it using only chord tones. The first exercise you want to work on is going from a one chord to a four chord in several different keys. Now if you're new to this, you don't have to do it in all 12 keys. That's going to make it a lot more difficult than it needs to be. You just want to start off getting this sound in your ears. So I would start off doing it in three or four keys and when it's comfortable, maybe add one or two of the harder keys and then move on to the next exercise. If you're watching this tutorial, then I'm guessing you'd like to get a lot better at understanding chords and theory as well as improvisation. If that is the case, then I'd like to invite you to come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School. In my sax school, I have courses dedicated to improvisation that will definitely help you organize and understand the way chords are working together, which will make your improv sound a whole lot better. So if that sounds like something you would like to learn, then stop by the Scott Paddock Sax School today. I'll put the link in the video description. For the next example, I am just gonna add in another chord. So I'm gonna add in a five chord. So we're gonna have a one chord for two measures, a four chord for two measures, a five chord for two measures, and then back to a four chord for two measures. So we're gonna start off in the key of C. So of course, your one chord is a C major chord, your four chord is an F major chord, and your five chord is a G major chord. So again, we're playing another G major chord, but this time it's acting as a five chord, not as a one chord. So the scale degree of the chord is super important. Here's an example of me playing this chord progression using only roots. At the end, I play a C or a one so that it sounds resolved. Now, the more that you play this, the more you're gonna hear the one chord moving to the four chord, going to the five chord. You're just gonna get this sound in your ear, especially if you practice it using the process I'm talking about in this tutorial. It's gonna become very easy for you to hear and recognize these chord movements. Here's the exact same chord progression, but this time I'm gonna do it in the key of G and I'm gonna improvise using the notes in the triad. So my one chord is G, my four chord is C, and my five chord is D. For this last progression, we are gonna change things up a little bit. We are gonna play each chord for only one measure, and we are gonna add in the sixth chord. When you're talking about the diatonic sixth chord, in other words, the chord that appears as the sixth degree in the major scale, it is a minor chord. So I wrote six min for six minor. Now there's something I wanna talk about theory-wise. Oftentimes when you uh, watch a tutorial and they're talking about the numbers of chords, the scale degrees of chords, they use Roman numerals and the uppercase Roman numeral means major and the lowercase Roman numeral means minor. That's awesome, but I just think it's a way easier to use the number 
And then if it's minor, write minor beside it or whatever chord suffix you wanna add, you can add that to it. It just takes another thing out of the equation that you have to figure out or analyze. So if you look at a six, you know that it's a six. The second you look at it, if you look at a VI, it might take you a second or two to realize it's a six. So in theory, oftentimes you are gonna see Roman numerals. Okay, let's talk about the progression. This progression is super common. You've heard it all over the place. It is a one chord going to a six minor chord, going to a four chord, going to a five chord. This is what it sounds like. I just played it in the key of G. So your one in the key of G is G. Your six in the key of G is E minor. Your four in the key of G is C major. And your five in the key of G is D major. And of course, I could transpose that chord progression into any key because I'm thinking of it as scale degrees and not letter names. So this is the one at six minor, four, five in the key of F. So that was an F major chord, a D minor chord, a B flat major chord, and a C major chord. So if you wanna get really good at hearing and memorizing chord progressions, this is the technique and process that you should use. Start off really simple with a one chord going to a four chord, then add in a five chord, then add in a six chord, and before you know it, you'll be able to recognize all of those chord changes, and you can keep using this same process with more difficult chord changes. So once you get it down, you just kind of keep adding to it, get more comfortable playing in different keys, and your ears are gonna get so much better because you're gonna hear the way that the chords are working together. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School. Uh -huh.